So right now I'm going to show you um, how to install Slackware, a fresh install of Slackware, on a um, machine. So obviously the first thing you're going to do is we have the system. Um, now the only disk I downloaded was the first disk of Slackware because um, I'm just going to do a network install because I don't want to have to deal with, you know, um, nonsense involving the you know, a 2.2 gigabyte DVD. Anyway, so here's the uh, boot up screen when you install. Um, since this system is a Pentium 4, just a regular Pentium 4 system right here, um, what I'm just going to do is hit enter and it'll just boot up into setup. And the reason why the video quality is less than stellar is because I'm using my phone as my camera. But all right, so it's asking me my key uh, layout. Since I'm in the U.S., I'm just going to press Enter. Okay, and now what you're going to do is log on as root. And what you'll note, what you would have noticed up there, is it wants you to partition your hard drive before you install Slackware. So we're going to run cfdisk which shows us this screen. Now this system's already been partitioned for Linux, but what I'm going to do is just completely erase all the partitions just so you can see how to do it. So we'll do delete both partitions. So now we have a completely clean 40 gig hard drive. Um, so what we're going to do is create a new partition, primary, and this is going to be our swap partition. This system has 1.25 gigs of RAM, so I'm just going to put in probably, I don't know, 1.5 gigs. Alright, and we want to put this at the beginning of free space, just because, I and mean, granted it doesn't matter really where I put it, since the system is new enough to boot off any partition. Alright, so the next thing we're going to do is create um, a new uh, slash root partition. So. We're just going to use up all the remaining free space. And on this drive, what we're going to do is make it bootable. So uh, we, I just hit enter and set the bootable flag. And this is already um, prepared as a Linux partition, the 38 gigabyte partition. So what I'm going to do is take the 1.5 gigabyte partition and set its type to swap, just to make sure. And we'll see swap is number 82. So it defaults 82 anyway, so we can just use 82. Okay, and now we're done with um, partitioning the hard drive. So all we have to do is hit right, type yes, and make sure that... And if this is a hard drive with actual data on it, then I suggest you do this differently. Um, this is why I'm doing this on a spare system. <laughs> on a spare hard drive on the spare system. So we'll... So I typed yes. Now we're done. So now we'll quit, and so now we'll run setup. All right, so this is the Slackware installation screen. Um, so you can go through the help file. You can set your key map, which you should have done at the beginning of setup. Um, first thing we're going to do is set our swap partition. So we'll add swap, and this is the only Linux swap partition that we have set up. So we'll click OK. And we aren't going to check for bad blocks. I know this hard drive is just a spare drive, so I'm not worried about it. Um, all right, so we'll press OK. Now, we don't have any other partitions here, so we'll just set this as the uh, root partition. And we'll just do a quick format. And we'll, yeah, I think we'll use ext4, because this isn't going to be used for anything else. It's not going to be read by any other operating system, so I'm not worried. So click OK. Now it's going to format. Then we click OK. And because I'm doing this 
as a net install, I'm going to install from an HTTP server. So I selected um, HTTP server. And now it wants to do DHCP, so automatic um, network configuration. In my case, I'm going to be doing that because we use DHCP on my network. So I'll click yes. And now it's going to configure the um, Ethernet interface. And now it wants the IP address of the server. So I'm going to log into my laptop. And because I'm using the RAT server, I'm just going to ping it so I can get the IP address. So, you can't really see it, but ping mirror.rit.edu. Whoops. And we'll just cancel that. And we'll see it's HTTP colon slash slash 129.21.171.98. Click OK. And if I remember correctly, it's Slackware. It's asking for the directory of on the server where Slackware uh, installation, the Slackware uh, software is located, so we'll do Slackware slash Slackware dash 14.0 slash Slackware. So that should work. And what it's just going to look for is the packages.txt, which will list all the packages for the operating system. So I'll click OK. Um, we don't need to set up HTTP again because we're set. Um, so I'll click no, and it's just going to download the packages, or the package tree rather. 90. And just a note about this system this is a um, HP Pavilion 742C with 1.25 gigs of RAM. It came with 512 megs, but I had extra memory, and um, a Pentium 4, 2 gigahertz, and it has a 40 gig hard drive attached. Normally I have an 80 gig, but that's running XP, so this can be used as a general purpose system. My 40 gig drive is just my spare drive. Um, Alright, so here's the software that we can install on Slackware. So um, I'm going to get rid of Emacs because I have no use for it right now. KDE I'm not going to install because the system is not fast enough for it, and I'm just not a fan of KDE in general. And the good thing is we have XFCE as an option. Um, I believe that's it. Yeah. So we'll click OK. And it's going to ask us how we want to install our software, so like what setup we can do. So um, what I'm going to do is use menu mode because it's how I prefer to install software, because um, the first language distribution I ever used was Fedora Core 2. Um, so all this, I'm not going to play with it since it's the base system, and while I am quite familiar with Linux, I am not as enough of an expert to want to fool around with certain software, especially since I've only been playing with Slackware recently. Um, so all of this I think we're going to keep, yeah. Um, what is this, program development? Yeah, I think I kept everything here so I could compile software. Um, alright, source code we keep, in case I want to install drivers. Um, library, I think I kept all the libraries, so I wouldn't have to worry about them later. Because the thing is, Slackware apparently doesn't, um, have dependency resolution built in. Alright, so, network I think I kept, even though the system doesn't have Wi-Fi. Um, I have an old ZD1211 base card, but I don't know where it is. And either way, this system is hooked up through Ethernet, so it's not a big deal. So I'll click OK. Um, text I kept. Considering that I don't actually know what any of this is. Um, yeah, I didn't want to play with it, so I didn't want to worry about it. Um, the X window system, I just uninstalled any drivers that wouldn't be relevant. 
Um, so, I'm not sure about these input drivers, really. I mean, synaptics we can get rid of, because this isn't a laptop. But, um, yeah, I mean, we aren't going to worry about that. Then any video drivers I don't need. Whoops. That was weird. Alright, so... I don't need an ATI driver, because this doesn't have... God oh, damn it. Sorry, I'm trying to type one-handed here. Alright, this has built-in Intel graphics. Actually, let's keep that, because that's a fallback driver. Okay, it has an NVIDIA card installed as a main card, so we're going to keep those drivers. Whoops. We'll keep VESA in case. It's a fallback. Let's see. All this we'll keep. Yeah, I think we're going to keep all this. Okay. Uh, some of this I removed because I don't need it. Like, black box, since I'm using XFCE, I'm not going to use it. Flexbox, FVWM. It's an old... Um, desktop environment from the old days. <laughs> um, Thunderbird I don't need on this system, neither do I need Sea Monkey. Although I do like that it offers you Firefox and Thunderbird, or you can pick Sea Monkey, I do like that. Um, Window Maker we aren't going to use either. This game we're using XFCE. Nice comes with design libraries. Alright, so that's all we need there. And XFCE, I think I kept everything, because those are all pretty essential. Alright, so now it's just going to go ahead and install everything from the internet. So this will take a while. Um, so, that's it for now. Um, next part of the video will be coming up. So it's been 48 minutes, and... We're almost finished with installation. Um, it's currently installing the XFCE components. Um, once it's done with that, I think it's just games, and then we can get on to configuration. Sorry that my hand keeps getting in the way. Uh, it's kind of hard to remember that the lens is right where my thumb would normally go. Um, Alright, so, weather plug-in. Yeah, I think it's almost done. Window manager, themes, yep, themes is the last. Alright, so we'll almost, we'll have a time soon. I think it's going to be 50 minutes. Yep. So, 49 minutes and 3 seconds is how long it took me to install, and I have a fairly fast internet connection. Just gotta give it some time. So it's currently updating the font cache, apparently. Usually these things take forever. Alright, so now it wants to ask me if I want to use a uh, USB flash drive to boot the system. So if I needed it. Um, I'm not going to use one though, so I'm not going to worry about it. Um, again, this is the only operating system on this hard drive, so I'm just going to do an automatic installation, because I don't need anything else, and I'm not very experienced with Lilo. Okay. Um. Oh, it gives us a cool penguin logo. I like that. Cool penguin. Because it is a, and I would love to use the, uh, you know, frame buffer console, but first off, this is a 1280 by 1024 monitor. Second, this is an NVIDIA card in the system, so I don't want to really mess with the NVIDIA card. So I'll just use standard, um, curl. Program. 
I don't think we need any. Um, all right, we aren't going to worry about that. Where do we want to install this? Format floppy disk. Oh yeah, I forgot the system has a floppy drive. <laughs> um, no, we're just going to do the MBR, because it's the only hard drive partition. Oops. Um, that's weird. The monitor looks fine, it's just that the camera's not agreeing with it. Hold on. Alright, there we go. Sorry about that. Um, we're using a USB mouse. Whatever. Yes. Okay, this is an HP 742C, so we'll just give it that name. VRQCC. I'm going to use DHCP. I'm pretty sure we don't have one. Either way, we have a DHCP server. Okay, so what do we want to run at start? This does not have a printer hooked up to it, so I'm not going to worry about that. Okay, we'll keep that. Yeah, that's probably important. Yeah, this isn't a server, so I'm not going to worry about it. Okay. So, yeah. Do we? Do we not? Do we? Do we not? For the sake of playing with it. I'm impressed by the amount of fonts that I can select for this. Um, let's just cancel. Um, this is set to local time because there's a Windows installation on it. We are US Eastern. We use XFCE, yep. Okay, we need to set a root password, so let's go ahead and set that. Okay. All right, sweet. So now we can reboot with CD out, so we'll go ahead and do that. So exit setup. Press control delete. I think it takes a second to reboot, but I'll try it again. There we go. This keyboard's not actually original to this system. It's from the Slimline. Um, I just prefer to have a PS2 mouse if I can use it, and PS2 keyboard if I can use one. Okay, so this is the Slackware boot-up screen. Or rather, the Lilo boot-up screen. Just give me a second, I'm trying to put the disc away. Alright. So, now let's boot into Slackware. So, we gotta wait for it. If I remember, this takes the longest... Like, it's actually not that slow of a boot up, but it just takes a bit during first boot. It's 2.30. Um, just gotta wait for it. This is a lot slower than it should be, in all honesty. But oh well. Just give it a few minutes here. It'll do it. 
albeit very slowly. Alright, there we go. Oh, BIOS data check. You have to look up what that means. Okay, so right now it's booting up. Alright, so it does switch to the higher resolution anyway. Oh, it's using the Noveo driver. This is a GeForce 4, so I'm kind of surprised that it's actually supported by Noveo. Okay, good, Ethan, that worked. The last time I installed the Ethernet wasn't working, so... I, I just think it was an issue with maybe the cable or something. So now it's generating... Um, keys. Public keys. I don't know why. Again, this is actually a new system to me. I don't really know much about Slackware, but we'll boot. We'll log in. Is root. And so, oh nice, it gives you the fortune. So, um, I'm not going to log in as root, so what I'll do is add a user. I just have to remember how to do this. Alright, so user add m will create a home directory. Um, I'm going to use bin bash, which is just a the standard uh, console used in Linux today. Let's see, home directory defaults group. Okay, so lowercase g gives me the option to do users as my group. Uppercase g will let me do um, wheel, because I want to do wheel so I can use sudo. Oh, whoops, I can give myself a username. Um, okay, so Maybe let's add a. Oh wait, I think there's a certain way you have to add these switches because I I remember you had to do this in um, Arch. I just have to remember how to do it. Sorry, this is taking me a little while. I just have to remember how to do all this. Dash m dash s slash bin bash. Then I think I can type my username. Okay. And then we're going to give myself a password. Alright, so by the way, this is how you add a user, like a normal user. Um, I just add the wheel group so I could use sudo. And the next thing we're going to do is set up sudo so I can log in as the root user and not have to log out of my account. So the first thing we're going to do is run vi sudo. Alright, so we just have to scroll down. We find wheel this section, which basically, I mean, it gives you, it tells you in the comment um, if I'm part of the group wheel. I can use sudo. So, we're just going to delete the uh, comment there. Then we just have to do colon w enter and that tells you it's saved. Then we just have to do colon q enter and then we're out. Then we'll just log out Okay, so I'm logged in, and now what we're going to do is start X. Hopefully it will work. I think it just works out of the box, which is really nice for me, because NVIDIA cards are a pain in Linux. It takes a bit, because it's, um, it's an older system. Alright, so we get our first uh, start of the panel. For me, I like it a certain way, um, so I'll just set that up. I won't bore you with how I set it up. So. Actually, no, I will. <laughs> Not to be a bad person or anything, I just think it's nice to know how to do it. If you just don't know how to do it, or if you're not familiar with XFCE or whatever. So we just go to Panel Preferences, 
I prefer 24. By the way, we're going to make it look less ugly than this. Um, I want attached to the top super length. We don't need to automatically increase. And we'll just add. We want to add. I think I add applications menu. I add a giant separator just to. Whoops. Doesn't matter. Separator. And then, um, I think it's notification icons, yeah. Well, actually, mixer, then, so mixer. I don't even know if the audio card will work, because I have a weird configuration of audio cards. Then, clock. That's what I put, so. We'll just set up the separator to expand. Um, we'll make it dots, I guess. No, you know what, we, we won't make it dots, we'll make it transparent. Close. I don't like showing the frame on anything. It's a thing. <laughs> I just don't think it looks right. Um, so we'll close the frames. Get rid of the frames, rather. And there's our top panel. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is add a bottom panel. And we'll make it 124. Lock. By the way, did I lock the other panel? No, I didn't. Alright, so. Let's see. I don't add a lot, so. I think all I'm going to add are window buttons. Oops. Separator. And then show desktop. And then we're going to make the separator expand. Transparent, close, close. And then there's our desktop. I mean, we're set at this point. Um, everything's set up in Slackware from a GUI perspective. Just going to make it look less ugly because. This looks ugly as hell. <laughs> um, so we'll just set some appearance options. Um, set to dawn, and then... Set to default 4.2. And now it doesn't look like it's from Windows 98 anymore. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've basically set up Slackware entirely. Um, if you want to see, we can, like, go on the internet. And, I mean, it has a fairly decent selection of software. You know. Surprisingly, no calculator. <laughs> Which could be a little annoying. Um, but I'm a math miner, so I can live. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, you have a decent selection. I'll just go online just to show you it works. So you have to give that. Oh, whoops. How's it not my default browser? There's only one browser installed. Um, yeah, this is running fairly slowly. It's actually kind of disappointing, but whatever it's running. I can optimize it later. Alright, so... I'm not even going to bother going on YouTube because I've tried YouTube on the system and it's just jerky. Again, there's probably something I could do about that, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. For some reason the unit is not working correctly. Oh, there it is. But yeah, I mean, it runs. Google Maps will work. Yeah, just gotta give it a minute, and then, you know, ooh, Hartford. I mean, it's a little slow, choppy. Let's see if we can make it to Willimantic. Wait, where's six? Oh, there it is. Yeah, so, like, there's, you know, oh, look, Willimantic. 
All right, so yeah, I mean that that's it. It's it seems to be running slowly. Um, but I don't know. I'll probably try rebooting and see what happens. Anyway, so that's how you perform a Slackware installation uh, from scratch on a system where you don't need to worry about the software on it. Uh, that's it. All right. Thanks for watching.